Welcome back, family. This is the kind of video I absolutely love. I'm going to show you how to get filthy rich. I'm talking the kind of rich where generations from now, they're looking at a picture of the wall of you, and they're like, that was the person who started it all. It made the family wealthy for generations. Yes, that's called creating generational wealth, and we're going to show you how to do it today. And I'm going to show you a few of the, the old school ways of doing it. Uh, remember how I talked about the rule of 110? I'm going to talk about the rule of 100 and the rule of 120 and what it takes to create millions. I'm not talking just a little bit like a million. I'm talking multi-million dollar, we'll say, estates for people down the road and everything else. Now, we're going to start and just say this. If you're going to want to be rich someday, you need to take advantage of the free stocks. Of course, if I got the Moo Moo link down below, you're gonna have an, you're gonna need an account to do what we're gonna do in. This is a good one. And you click the link. You got to use my link. But if you use the link, you will get up. Uh, you'll get five free stocks worth up to what ten thousand dollars for putting a hundred dollars in. If you put two grand or more in, you'll give you fifteen free stocks worth up to thirty thousand. So put the hundred dollars in there at least. And then of course, if you click the Weeble link down below, put a dollar in, you'll get up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,000. Take advantage of both of them. And Weeble does have crypto. So take advantage of it. Now, what do we go? Let's start out with a few things. One, as we move through this, I got to show you how much the S&P 500 makes because there are some numbers we're going to use. I know a lot of people would say, hey, what's the, what's the earnings that we can get off the money we're investing when we're doing this, Mo? Well, here it is. I'm going to show you the average annualized return since its inception since 1928 through the end of last year is 11.82% in the S&P 500. If we go to when it had 500 stocks, this one I like a little better because it's more realistic. It's more diverse. And it's actually 11.88%. So I'm going to use that number, 11.88% in our calculations as we move forward for this, because I wanna show you how to get rich, how to make money. And this is it. This is the easiest but true way to do it. And I'm waiting till you see these rules that go with it. Really putting the teacher cap on today. But the good news is you, what you learn today can make you millions. I'm gonna show you that right now. So this, as we have seen before, is how to invest in the stock market. This is how to invest in the stock market basics concepts here and i can't stress this enough i always tell people you need to put in minimum 10 percent, and you see that right here so this is an annual salary for one person one person most people will have a significant other to go ahead and do this with and but i'm going to put in fifty thousand dollars i'm going to say you're going to get a three percent raise annually and I'm going to say current age is 30. Yeah, we can do this with different numbers, but we're going to start with 30. And we're going to say you're going to retire at 67. That's full retirement at this particular moment. You have $0 and you're getting at 11.8% annualized rate of return from the S&P 500. I actually think it's 11.88, but we'll just leave it at this. So after we calculate, how much money do you have? Here it is. You can see it down here, uh, but we'll put it up here. Your total is now $3 million. $500,000 when you retire at 67. Look at this. You only put in how much money? 340,000. That's right. This is the power of compounding. Uh, what do they call it? The eighth wonder of the world or ninth wonder of the world compounding. And this is it. You take 300,000 and turn it in 3.5 million. Here's the beauty. Watch this. And this is what I always tell people. That's just one person. What happens if there's two of you and you get married at age 30 and you put it in there? Look what you got now. When you both retire, 67 years old, $7 million. Now imagine putting this into a nice high income dividend fund or a, a, some bonds, a combination, and the combination is what we're gonna lead into next. This is the kind of money. This is truly how you get rich. There is no bull crap behind this. Dollar cost averaging year after year, put it in the S&P 500, and this is what history tells us we can expect. Now, could it be higher? Yes. Could it be lower? Yes. But based on that many years, I know people say, well, we can't expect that. We couldn't expect it. I heard the same thing in the 90s. We can't expect those gains moving forward. Not only did we got, get them, they actually went higher. So you never know what kind of technology and other things that have come out to improve gains as we move forward. I'm not betting against the U.S. economy and the S&P 500. Uh, now, I want to show you one other thing, then we'll move on to the how to invest properly. And here you go. As you can see, if we start this out and say you're 22, you're 22 years old, 
and you do this and there's two of you at 22, look how much money you have now. Not only did you start earlier, which is the best, and you started with two of you. I'm talking two people, $17.5 million when you retire. And you can say, why is it just one of us, Mo? Why is it just me, 50000 There you go, 8.9. And don't think you can't do this if you're making minimum wage. We'll say you're making uh, $7.25 an hour, roughly 40 hours a week. So we're looking, we'll say $300 times 52 weeks. We'll just say roughly 15000 a year. So even if you're making only $15,000 a year, and we'll say you're starting at 18 years old, and you put it in there and you say, what am I going to make, Mo? Look how much money you got because you started putting in right away and you continue to grow. $4.2 million. All right. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. If you started out and say 50000 at 18, which would be awesome, just one person, $14 million. And if you're married, it's $28 million. So that's a little idea of what you can make doing it. Now, the big question I always get to people is, why well, is if I don't want to be super risky, go 100% into the S&P 500? What's this rule of 110? What are the other ways to invest? And you're going to love this too, because I got a couple different ones in here. But I'm going to show you this right away. The rule of 110, and just so people understand how to use it. These are the different ratios. What the ratio is very simple, very, very simple. Let's make sure everybody understands all you do is you take, if it's the rule of, we'll say 100 or 110 is the old school way, you take that minus your age. So if you're 40 years old, you take 110 minus 40, that equals 70. 70% 70 of your money should be into an S&P 500 index fund. That's how simple it is. The other 30% goes into a total bond fund. And there's a lot of those out there, which we'll talk about. So here you go. You can see this. Uh, uh, as we pull it up, you can't see it. Now you can see it. These are different ratios. This is the long-term annualized return, okay? And uh, this is pretty nice because once you see this, you can see how uh, the maximum historical loss, this means in a year, you could have lost 43%. As you get down to total bonds, the most you would have lost is 8% in a year. And then you can see a nice combination between. The standard, the old school, where they always said not using the rule 110, everything else, 60, 40, 60, 40 is where it's at. Long-term annualized return, 8.7%, not bad. The biggest you would ever have during a crash is 26.6% in a year. But but I, and I, I can show you this a little bit more clear. You can pause the video, take a look at the different ways of doing it. That means you're 100% S&P, no bonds. And as you go down, zero S&P, all bonds. And then the rule of 110, which I just explained to you, taking that minus your age tells you how to do it. And then we move over because this one gives you an idea of that 60, 40. And I wanted to show you a chart of all the different years that you could have did the rule of 110 or, and then you did a 60 or I should, let me rephrase that. This is where you do the 60, 40 portfolio. You're not doing the rule of 110 on this one, but I did want to show everybody the gains using a 60, 40. This is the other old school way. You just stay 60, 40 all your life from beginning to end 60 40 and if you did that you can see all the way up through what happens here and you got a lot of green but i wanted to tell you one thing besides the great depression and i want everybody to listen to this who's been suffering how many times do you see years and years of red well the great depression was four years correct in a row and then we had one year here and then two how many times two and two right and we already have 2022, which is going to be red. The odds of it being red again, it's there, especially if we have a serious recession, which next year I think we will. There's a chance. Now, there's also a chance we don't because most of the times we don't. And if we do have a red year next year, we do see 2023 being red. Based on all, we're going all the way back almost 100 years. What are the odds that we're going to see three straight red years? I'm telling you. The odds to me are extremely, extremely low unless we're seeing a Great Depression-like time. And so this is very interesting. But you can see here we had a lot of double digits here for a couple of a years. And now you're seeing a big correction. When you see that many big double-digit years, I can understand it. And you can see before it, too, we had a lot. We had that big collapse. And now as we go with the 60-40, and you can say, what about 2009, 10, and 11? Mo, didn't we have the Great Recession? Yeah, but because it was bonds in there, it, bu it buoyed it. Buoyed it? Am I saying it right? I think so. It buoyed it. And so it kept it up, and that's good. So shout out to the person who made this chart down here, Charlie Bello, I believe it is. So very neat little chart. 
I absolutely loved it. So I want to give him credit for that. Now, this is it. That's it. That was the idea of what I wanted people to realize is that that is the true way to get rich, not trying to you know, go out and buy a million dollars worth of lottery tickets. If you are looking for a long term, hey, this is it. This is what I'm doing. Taking 10 percent of my pay every paycheck and putting it into the S&P 500 or a combination using the rule of 110. You could use the rule of 100 for those uh, want less risk. If you're 40, you do that. Uh, 100 minus 40, you put 60% in equities, 40% in bonds, or in the bond you can use BOND. That's a nice bond fund, an ETF. And for the S&P 500, you can use ticker symbol VOO. And if you use those two and do that combination, if you want more risk, use the rule of 120. I like that one, plus 5% in crypto, uh, uh, half and half Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I would look at it and say, okay, 120 minus 40 would be 80. I'd put 80% into equities. I would take 5%, put it into crypto, which would be half and half Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then the other 15%, I would put into the bond fund. I hope that helps a lot of people out there. Now you got crypto, you got crypto exposure for diversification. You got the S&P 500 nicely. And then you got some bonds as well. And especially now because bonds are low. Here's the thing about bonds. People understand when the Fed raises rates, bonds act in an inverse manner. The, the cost of bonds actually, when rates go up, bonds end up dropping in value. So remember that. And when the, the rates start to drop, the bonds will actually go up in value. So eventually here in the next 12 months, I expect to see a rally in bonds that will be very, very nice. So I, that's what I'm waiting for. I, I will be looking into some of them. That is, uh, if you haven't done it too, I ask you this, are you retiring and are you retiring? Are you investing in your retirement account? Put it down below. Let me know. Do you have a 401k, a 403b? Do you have a Roth IRA, or, uh, an IRA at all, pension? Let me know in the comments what you got. You don't have to tell me how much unless you want to. And that's fantastic. I got an old teacher's pension. I think it's worth about 300000 after working almost 20 years as a teacher, which to me is sad, but I have it. It's still growing at 4% annually. So I'm still getting some money from that. And of course, uh, the, re, the 401ks and stuff I got here. So we'll see how it goes. Do you have any? Let me know down below. And of course, where are you from? I always like to shout out to all the people from around the world and around the United States. Now, if you haven't done it, come over to the Patreon. We have a lot of plans over there. Your private Discord, thousands of members. You can see the portfolios. Highly recommend it. Take your investing to the next level. And Hit those free stocks from Moomoo, put $100 in using the link right below the video. And of course, the Weeble put a dollar in. And if you do those two things, you're going to get a lot of free stocks, maybe worth up to a big amount of money. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get out there and make some money.